This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Mañana que vaya temprano, mami. Ahí no le van a cobrar nada. Esta es una clínica. Era donde antes era Prevencasa, pero aquí ya, ya va a haber un consultorio especial para las personas del bordo. Ok. Ok. A ver. studying injection drug users and sex workers and men who have sex with men and we were realizing that the accessibility to HIV care just wasn't there. We obviously in a federally funded research study can't be providing services, can't be providing HIV care in our projects. So this was a, a dilemma for me and for Tom and for other researchers that were working there. Along the same time, we had students coming to us from UCSD saying, could we set up a free clinic like the one we have in San Diego? Could we do it in Tijuana? And I said, what a great idea. And we figured out a way to make this happen, and we turned it into a course. It's a preclinical elective for medical students from UCSD and from the publicly funded medical school in Tijuana, in Uabese. Buenos días, este, muy buenos días y bienvenidos a Fronteras Saludables, Health Frontiers in Tijuana. Good morning, everyone. We have this clinic set up called Health Frontiers in Tijuana that is led by Dr. Jose Luis Burgos, who's a Mexican physician who's also got a UCSD appointment and one at Wabuse. He's licensed to provide medical care and is an HIV specialist. He directs the, the clinical activities in, in Tijuana at HFIT. And we have students studying side by side, providing free care to the poor. And most of those poor are people that are in our studies. The Ashfield Clinic is near the U.S.-Mexico border in Tijuana, Zona Norte. We're very close to the Tijuana River Canal, and we're very close to the Red Light District in Tijuana. This area has very vulnerable population, such as people who inject drugs, female and male sex workers, and a large number of migrants. Many of them are homeless and in great need of help. Your preferred language? Well, it's going to be English and Spanish, and I, I mean, it's, it's a matter of... You don't care either way? Okay. But I, I'm not able to hear very well because I got an infection in my ears, okay. so, you know, I mean... The clinic runs very strongly on Saturdays. Altogether, we have around 30 students. Uh, sometimes people say, well, what are you going to do with so many students? Are they not going to be doing anything? Are they really going to learn about uh, global health? And, you know, the clinic is not staffed. We don't have funding for, for staff. And the nuts and bolts of the clinic are made out from the students. The students register patients. The students navigate patients throughout the different services we offer. The main services is primary care. So generally, when you're looking at a, at a new, you want to pull the ear lobe so you can straighten the ear canal. So when you go in, you're not damaging. And then you will see through here. Many of these patients have severe barriers to uh, healthcare services in Mexico. Even though in Mexico, healthcare is universal, it's not easy to navigate the system. So for many of them, we are the only healthcare services they receive. 
I think it's a very good experience, especially for students, because we get a lot of clinical practice and we get to approach patients that we usually do not see in the big hospital. By interacting with them and really talking to them, you learn a lot about them and it really changes the type of mindset that you have about the patient. These people come in with diseases that one person came in with a UTI, right? A urinary tract infection. And in America, like a UTI, you go in, get an antibiotic, and then get treated for it right away. And people, because of the pain of it, uh, uh, generally just generally just get treated within the week, right? They, they can't tolerate it. Um, but then in Tijuana, there's patients that had UTIs for three months, right? Unimaginable amount of time. And it's like, how did you live for three months with this thing? And, you know, and and they'll be like a sex, sex worker. So it's like, oh, like that must be so miserable. I think the idea is, is that it makes better doctors out of these young kids. And, and I think for the Mexican students, they're learning about resources they don't have and things that they can aspire to from, you know, these kids show up from UCSD where they have every test available they want to run. Well, you don't have that in Tijuana. They can start advocating for things and for change that is desperately needed. In something we learned along uh, when we opened the clinic, we were seeing many patients who were affected by HIV infection. We were very surprised that, you know, even being a general primary care clinic, many of the patients we tested did not know they were HIV positive. So it was the first time they learned they were HIV positive. And overall, on a sample of about 600 patients, uh, the prevalence was almost, it was about 3.5%. So it was very much higher than we expected. And you know, some of the studies from our division, led by Dr. Stephanie Strati, show that the prevalence or the HIV epidemic in Tijuana is on the rise. In Proyecto Acueta, we've been studying a cohort of injection drug users for many years now. And many of our participants uh, have tattoos all over their bodies and um, their face. Some of them are gang affiliated tattoos, others are just you know, very much uh, disfiguring. And that led my colleague, Dr. Vicky Ojeda, to come up with this idea to say, hey, you know, maybe we could have a tattoo removal program. Es que me dan trabajo, pero, pero, pero este, se requiere la presentación y los trabajos, y los tatuajes se ven muy visibles y, y llega la gente y me ven los tatuajes y ya, y se asustan. Y luego, luego me dice, no, no, usted no puede trabajar, salga really? afuera. Sí. Well, that's awful. A lot of the companies yeah, yeah. will pay for a, a, right, a right. physical exam, and even people that have them on their backs, on their stomachs, they will not be eligible for employment wow. as a result wow. of that. And that goes from everything from like the mom and pop shops all the way to like the maquinadoras and big yeah. industries. Uh -huh. So. No. No. It's already working. It's like instant gratification. <laughs> like that. Wow. We'll be looking at a variety of outcomes, not just physical health outcomes like HIV seroconversion, but we'll be looking at mental health status, we'll be looking at labor market outcomes, and the idea is really to understand what does this mean if you uh, implement this as part of a repatriation program for deportees, for example, um, or a community integration program for criminal justice populations. Yeah, that would be the dream. Like the other thing that we're doing is we're taking advantage of this program to say, well, we're going to screen everybody for HIV. And what that means is that anyone that's HIV positive, we can uh, send them to telemed the HIV yeah. telemedicine program. Yeah. And then this is another way that we can kind of do broader screening for the community yeah. since we know that there is so much, you know, so many risk behaviors. Yeah. Dr. Burgos uh, came up with the idea of a telemedicine project because what was required for people to get their HIV medicines was a prescription from the Capacites Clinic. The Capacites clinics have been set up in various cities around the country as standalone dedicated HIV clinics. That's a great idea, but their, their location, at least in Tijuana and some of the other cities we know about, um, is far from ideal. And so what would happen was they get uh, tested at the HVIC clinic, they're found to be HIV positive, we say, we'll give you this referral to the Kaposi's clinic, which is way 
the heck over across the city and nothing would happen. This is happening over and over again. So he came up with the great idea of a telemedicine project that allows him to hook up with the Capacitz Clinic right on the spot. Tu mano sobre tu pierna. Haz la funicular. Ajá. Buenos días, doctor. ¿Cómo está? Bien, bien, gracias. Quería preguntar, when, when we do the telemedicine consult, we always call Dr. Gallardo, Manuel Gallardo, or Dr. Lam from Capacitz to let them know which patient we're uh, with at the moment and what we found during the consult and if there's any problem or if everything's fine. And we just check with them and see that uh, we're, um, you know, seeing eye to eye with uh, in regards to the patient. Exactly bien. El colesterol es lo único que salió un poquito bajo, pero fuera de eso todo estaba muy bien. And also, there's a privacy aspect which is important. Um, the patient doesn't have to sit in a room with a bunch of other HIV patients, which they may want to avoid because they don't necessarily want anybody else to know they're positive. So, the process in which Rebecca can communicate with Capacitz and get a specialist opinion on the treatment recommendations that she's making works very well. They also do special things like they'll keep your antiretroviral medicine there. You know, if you're homeless, you're living in the canal, it's a constant that you're being robbed. Even things that have no value, like antiretroviral drugs, why would somebody steal those? Well, they might think they had value. And so to be able to go there and know that your medication's there, it's a great thing. For telemedicine, you know, we want to make sure that uh, this intervention and this program is making a difference. Uh, preliminary results from our studies showing that it is. HIV care should be simplified. Patients should have huge difficulties in reaching HIV care, having to take three buses, having to spend 50, 60 pesos, which is a lot for them, and having to get there and miss their appointment because they were late and miss a whole day of work and maybe missing their job or, you know, it is complicated. Now for them, you know, the easier, the simplest way we keep it, the more it's going to work. And who's gonna benefit? Everybody's gonna benefit. Everybody in Tijuana, everybody in, in the U.S. because of the exchange between Tijuana and San Diego. And, and we can prevent, and we can prevent a lot of pain and suffering through these kind of programs. UCSD is involved first because this is a fantastic opportunity for research, training, and service. And those are the three pillars of what this university espouses. On a research perspective, we can engage in social epidemiology and basic science and clinical research. We can offer our students um, an unprecedented opportunity to do global health in our backyard and be home by dinner. And we're giving to a community that is really at need, and it makes me feel feel like I can sleep at night.